guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Ria. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to spend two weeks in New Zealand. So let's get straight into it. Day one, I would say you should start your trip north of Auckland going to Paihia. Paihia is a popular tourist town and it has a lovely beach and is also a great place to go if you want to explore the Bay of Islands. I'd recommend doing a boat tour from Paihia to the Bay of Islands. That was one of the highlights of our North Island trip. We did a tour with great sights and we got to see dolphins and go through the famous Hole in the Rock. The tour is literally called the Hole in the Rock Dolphin Cruise, so yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to see both of those. For day two, I would say you should head up to Cape Ringa, which is the very north part of New Zealand. It's actually where the Tasman Sea and the Pacific meet. Here you can walk down and see the famous lighthouse and just see the incredible views that Cape Ringa has to offer. Just a 20 minute drive away from Cape Ranga is the giant sand dunes. You can hire toboggans and surf down the dunes, which was super fun, but make sure you take spare clothes in case you get wet. Day three. It's quite a long drive from Cape Ranga to Cathedral Cove, but it's absolutely worth it. Cathedral Cove is one of my favorite places that I saw in the North Island. I'm sure you've seen photos of it before, but it's beautiful. We actually did a kayak tour in Cathedral Cove and I'll link that in the description box below. It was a really special kayaking tour. We learned a lot about the Maori history. For those of you that don't know, Maori are native New Zealanders. Day four. Another really special place in New Zealand is Hobbiton and if you somehow haven't heard of Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, this is where both of those were filmed. Hobbiton is an amazing day out. It's a guided walking tour which lasts about an hour. You get to see the hobbit houses, the green dragon, and it's just incredible to see the detail that went into the set. So definitely make sure you head there. Day five, you should head to Waitomo. Or Waitomo, I'm not sure. I call it Waitomo, but it might be Waitomo, or it could be something else, and I'm just getting both wrong. Here you should head to the Glow Worm Caves. Here we did the Black Abyss tour, which was five hours of abseiling, climbing, and swimming through the caves with the glowworms. One thing I would say is it was freezing. I don't know if anyone else on that tour felt as cold as me. Everyone else seemed to be having the time of their lives and it was really good, I definitely recommend it, but I could not get past the cold. But it's really interesting. You learn a lot about the glowworms, about the caves, how the tour started, and you get hot chocolate and some treats, which believe me, you'll appreciate. Whilst you're here, I definitely recommend staying at the Waitomo Hilltop Glamping. It's a safari tent located at the top of a hill. You're basically cut off from the rest of civilization. There's some bath tops on the hill. It's a really special experience, so I'll make sure to link that down below, along with everything else that I've mentioned. Day six. Now we're heading to Rotorua. The highlight of Rotorua for me was the Tamaki Maori village overnight stay. You don't have to stay overnight, but if you can, I definitely recommend it. Otherwise, you should definitely go for the evening experience. Both of these include dinner and seeing the Maori entertainment. They take you through lots of different activities and talk a lot about the Maori culture. And it's just a really special experience. It's actually voted one of the best things to do in New Zealand. Day seven is Tongariro Alpine Crossing. This is a 19 kilometer day hike. It's definitely not the easiest hike you will do, but it's definitely worth it. It's featured in the Lord of the Rings film as Mount Doom, and it offers incredible sights. I'm sure you've seen photos of the Emerald Lakes and of the surrounding volcanoes. I definitely recommend packing for all seasons if you do this hike. Some parts are super warm. When you're climbing the top of the mountain, it gets very cold and windy, so pack layers and lots of water. Day eight. Now we're heading to the south of the North Island, which is Wellington, and that's the capital city of New Zealand. There's so much to do, whether that's food, drink, music, or just walking around the city is really special. If you want to explore, I definitely recommend checking out Cuba Street and going to the Olive Restaurant. The steak was so good. On day eight, head to the South Island. There are two ways to get from the North to the South Island. That's by ferry or by plane. 
The pricier option, probably the plane, but it will take you an hour to fly from Wellington to Christchurch. Otherwise, the ferry is three hours, but it's definitely a lot cheaper. I would say if you are getting the ferry and you have a car or camper, you have to pay to take that across. So just keep that in mind. If you get the ferry, you'll go from Wellington and in the South Island, you'll arrive in Picton. Picton's about a four hour drive to Christchurch, I believe. If you only have a short time in the South Island, I definitely recommend driving straight from Picton to Christchurch and exploring Christchurch for a few hours before you head on to the next place. Christchurch is actually where I am filming this right now. Christchurch is a really special city, but I'd say the highlights definitely will be Quake City and learning about the earthquakes that happened in Riverside Market, which has lots of food and drink options, the Botanic Gardens, which are really nice to walk around, plus a good free activity. And another thing that I love doing here was punting on the Avon. Day nine. Day nine is time to head to Tekapo. The more you see in the South Island, the more you will be so impressed with the natural beauty of New Zealand. I did love the North Island, but the South Island just has such incredible views. And I'd say it starts when you get to Lake Tekapo. Here, the best things to do are head to Tekapo Springs, hike or drive like we did to the Astro Cafe. From here, you get to see amazing views over Lake Tekapo and the food and drink is really good. A popular place to go in the evening around 10 o'clock is to the Church of the Good Shepherd. Here you get to see the incredible night sky in New Zealand. Day 10 is Lake Pukaki. Similar to Lake Takapo, it offers amazing views of the lake. The lake is so blue. It honestly looks like it's completely edited, but I promise it's not. From here, you'll start to see amazing views of Mount Cook, which is my favorite place in New Zealand. It start the drive to Mount Cook. I'd recommend doing the Hooker Valley hike, which is a three hour return hike. It's not a difficult hike, so don't worry about that. I'm probably gonna spam the screen with amazing photos from this hike because it was just incredible. Day 11. I didn't think through doing the counting because this is gonna get complicated. Day 11 is Queenstown, otherwise known as the adventure capital of New Zealand. Here I jumped out of a plane with skydive end zone which was the scariest thing I've ever done. I rewatch the video all the time because I just can't believe that it happened. Another popular extreme sport to do here is bungee jump with AJ Hackett. My favorite things that I did here were skyline Queenstown, go on the gondola, do the luging, and head to Onsen Hot Pools. Great food spots here include Ferg Burger, which is very famous around the world. You will see lots of queues outside whatever time you visit. I also loved cookie time. If you're anything like me and you love cookies and cookie milkshakes, this will be your heaven. The final place for great food, which is definitely a more healthy option, is Bespoke Kitchen. One thing I didn't get to do, which I definitely want to head back in the next few months to do, is the Ben Lomond track. Day 12. From Queenstown, start the drive to Glanarchy. It's only a 45 minute drive, but it's supposed to be one of the most scenic drives in the whole of New Zealand. Here you should stop at Bob's Cove, Bennett's Bluff Lookout and Glenarchy Wharf. Here I grab a coffee before you start the drive to Milford Sound. So a popular thing to do is to stay nearby in Teanu or in Queenstown. This takes us to day 13, which is Milford Sound itself. If you take a coach shore, you'll probably stop at some famous lookouts, which include Mirror Lakes and Pops View Lookout. So if you're driving yourself, make sure you stop there as well. At Milford Sound, you should do a day cruise, which lasts about 45 minutes, and you'll get to see incredible views of Milford Sound. Be prepared for rain. It's actually one of the wettest places in the world and rains about 270 days out of 365. If you're lucky, the sun might be out, or if you're like me, you'll get to see more for your GoPro footage after than you did when you were on the cruise. Now we get to the last day of the trip, which is day 14. For your final day, I would say spend the day in Wanaka, just 45 minutes from Queenstown. This town is stunning. Popular things to do in Wanaka include heading to the Wanaka tree, seeing the lavender fields, and also the famous Roy's Peak hike. If you're up for it, I definitely recommend doing Roy's Peak hike. It's a six hour return hike, and it's just constantly uphill, but the views at the top are worth it. Wanaka is a great place to finish, being so close to Queenstown, you can fly out of Queenstown or connect onto Auckland from here. So there are some things I haven't seen yet that I plan on adding to this list. These include Mount Aspiring National Park to do the Blue Pools track, heading to Franz Joseph to do a heli hike, 
heading to Abel Tasman National Park in the warmer months to see the incredible beaches, heading to Nelson Lakes National Park and Kaikoura for whale watching. Personally, my biggest regret that I didn't see in the North Island is Mount Taranaki. I had no idea that place existed until I was already in the South Island, so I plan on doing a trip back there. I'm sure there are so many more things to do and see in New Zealand. It's such an incredible place, but this is just my personal recommendations of how you should spend two weeks in New Zealand. I'll link everything I've mentioned down below, including a more detailed blog post that I've written on some of these places. I would love if you could comment below anything else that you wish I'd added on this list or just what your favourite things in New Zealand were. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe so I can continue making more videos like this for you guys. I think that's everything, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!